There we go. All right. So what we're going to talk about are models, what you're going to need to get started, some of our website resources for this product, preliminary setup, what you can do to get yourself ready to do the installation, how to set up the cameras, how to do your first analytics, you know, whether you want to test it or whether you want to deploy it for a customer, and then the settings in the IP plus and how you get notifications from the IP plus. So first, let's talk about the different models. Uh, we have released a large number of cameras that have IVA and IVA plus. Uh, so for every model camera, so let's take a bullet camera. We've got models with almost the same serial number, just one letter off and one will be the IVA version, which has about five analytics in it. And then we'll have the IVA plus uh, that has the complete suite of about 12 analytics in it. So you can get the same version that says I need object removed, which would be in an IVA plus. You got to get the IVA plus cameras. There is a price difference uh, between them, but it's not, you know, a huge price difference. It doesn't double or triple or quadruple. It's a small price difference between the two. Uh, and you'll need our second or third gen IP plus NVR with 4K. There is a possibility one of the distributors still has a second gen unit, which the only difference is it doesn't have the 4K monitor support or 4K camera support. So, you know, if you're at least a bit worried about it, you can, of course, you know, uh, contact your sales rep or contact uh, our tech support and they can look at the serial number for you and just make sure it's a 4K. I think everything out there now is 4K, so I don't think you got to worry too much about it. Uh, but just to give you a, uh, you know, a heads up. So uh, the third gen, you can plug a 4K monitor into it and plug 4K cameras into it. And we have uh, some 4K cameras in our lineup with uh, the IVA in it, including a really nice 180 degree camera, which I believe I, I did on our, our webinar. Uh, so you guys can go check that out. So the models of the IP plus, which is kind of, we're going to be like 60, 40 on what we're going to talk about as far as configuration. Uh, we've got a four port unit, an eight port unit and a 16 port unit, but the four port unit and the eight port unit, if you plug like an extra PoE switch in them, will actually give you the four port unit will give you up to nine channels and the eight port will actually give you up to 12 channels. So again, you went out anyway. So let's say you went out and did an installation and you put in four cameras for a guy and he just wants one more camera, one more camera. You know, now you got to go and negotiate, take back the four channel unit, get an eight channel unit or whatever. With the four PoE one, you don't have to do that. With the eight PoE one, you don't have to do that. Just introduce another PoE switch and you can support another couple of cameras. Uh, in the case of the four channel, you can support up to nine. In the case of the eight, channel unit, you can support the 12. The 16 channel unit is a 16 channel unit. On the eight and 16 channel unit, there is a way to externally extend storage. If you look, there's these little ports called E-Serial ATA right here, and it'll allow you to plug an E-Serial ATA drive to the systems itself. Anyway, uh, just want to let, give you guys a heads up on that. And the IP plus, Units are complete install. They'll set up fast, fast camera configuration. Don't worry about ports versus channels on the four, the four channel and eight channel, uh, sorry, the four port and eight port versions. Do have what's called our Pathfinder P2P remote access. Don't need to buy any licenses. Okay, so in the four channel unit and you put all your build up all the channels and you went to a fifth or sixth camera, you don't have to worry about adding a license to make that work. It'll fully support nine out of the box. We have some features we're not gonna talk about because I've got three or four webinars out there on it already, uh, but we have a system analysis and real time system network monitoring along with POE monitoring and our uh, five year warranty on these. New features of the IP plus, support 4K cameras, support 4K monitors, IVA plus, IVA and IVA plus camera support and event notification via the uh, IVA. Keep that in mind. And we're gonna go and now talk about the IVA cameras. So we've got a large number of cameras, ball cameras, varifocal cameras, small dome cameras, big tone cameras, bullet cameras, uh, industrial strength cameras, 360 cameras, all different cameras, uh, 
a 4K bullet, which I don't have a picture on here. And they're, they come with a large number of analytics. And as I said, they're separated into IVA and IVA plus models. And so you'll, you'll be able to use uh, these cameras and all their different functionalities with the uh, VMAX IP+. So let's talk a little bit about setup and what you'll need. So first off, to make the IVA cameras work with the IP+, you'll need an IP+, second or third gen product. So meaning if you did have a unit, see a customer's unit installed a year ago, you want to add some video analytics to it, okay, you can still use the IVA cameras with it. You just may need a firmware, a firmware update for the recorder. Ethernet cables, a laptop running a Windows Chrome web browser installed, latest IP finder, latest firmware and IVA plugin. We're going to talk about that and possibly a small uh, switch, PoE switch. The places you go get the software is our website. So we have our C3 CMS, which I have a several videos on the where to find the firmware ip finder and stuff like that so we have this complete list of software for the ip plus now we also have on our website videos on how to use the system information how to do the install startup how to add users how to set the record schedule how to manage cameras how to set up dbns how to set up email notifications so we're not going to go deep into those because we have some uh uh really good videos on this stuff. And I got another message coming in on the hookups. Okay. You plug your cameras into the different ports and then you plug your ethernet. I always say use port 16 really doesn't matter. Use port 16. If you have it completely filled up, so you have all 16 cameras, you plug the lap, you plug the uh, switch into port 16 and then the laptop into the switch and the last remaining camera. So it should be a small PoE switch. And then this way you can configure all the cameras. That'll allow you to do it. And then you run our IP finder on the laptop. And so that'll look something like this. It'll list out all the cameras. It'll find the cameras. The IP plus will give an IP address and set a new password in the camera automatically. You plug a camera in, it will re, it'll set a new password and a new strong password, which we're going to talk about right now, when it does it. So in order to access the cameras, once you've hooked them up to an IP plus and the IP plus has given them an IP address, it creates this new password. And what it does, the password consists of an exclamation point, capital letter A, and then the LAN MAC address that's listed on the unit itself. So it's a good, strong password. It's only the password for the camera in that loop. It's difficult for someone to, to mess around with the system anyway, but it does create a new strong password as per to keep the, to keep the units compliant with the latest uh, cybersecurity stuff they have out there. An example would be exclamation point A90DA6A163BAO. So you have to remember those combinations in order to access the camera in order to get the camera set up. All right, so just keep that in mind. Obviously, it won't be that because the MAC address of your IP plus will be different than another IP plus. When you're in the setup of the camera, you're going to look at the IVA menu, okay? And it should say enabled. And then you're going to look at the plugin. And as you can see, this camera is running 1026. The latest version is 1.034. And so update it. What you do is you go to our website, download it. I'll show you that in a second. And you should then be running 1.034, okay? And the reason for this is, is we do make modifications, changes to how uh, the analytics uh, perform, different communications functions and things like that. Now, when you do the update, you may see some errors. Uh, I ran the update on a couple of cameras and I saw a couple of different errors. Most of the time it's this one plugin failed, but the plugin doesn't fail. You just click okay and it, the plugin that starts. Okay, so you actually don't even have to click your little start button over here when it's done. All right. If you do, once you have everything set up, I will tell you this, there is a backup of the rules that you create that you can export it and save it for that particular camera if you want. Uh, it's just helpful if later on the camera gets struck by lightning, you put a new camera in there, you upload the rules. And so your calibration and rules are pretty much 
uh, done for you. So just keep that in mind that there is a way to back up the configuration. So when you go to the camera's web page, you can download the latest IP finder and the latest plugin and or the latest firmware. So again, you have an older camera, you want to get IVA running on it, okay? You can then go and now it doesn't work. It works, has to be something made in the last six months or so. Uh, best way to do it is contact tech support for compatibility. We can get that updated for you. But this is a two megapixel camera. You put the firmware in, you put the plugin in and you use the IP finder obviously to find uh, the cameras. If you have a box on a shelf at your uh, local distributor and it says IVA on it, that camera's got the IVA, well, the, I, the latest IVA plugin on it and you, you'll be ready to go. So you don't have to go through this. I'm just giving you an example of uh, if you, uh, you know, come across something and you want to, uh, you know, make sure you have the latest, you can reference our website. Let's say you've gotten into the camera and you're getting ready to go. And the reason why we're here is to talk about video analytics. So what you, you, what you should do first is calibrate the camera. So calibration uh, is, a, uh, is a function that you do in order to make sure the camera understands the measurements and the geometry of the room. And so what you do is you make sure you got the height right. Now, this one is still, you know, you want to make sure you got it set in imperial, so it'll be feet instead of meters. And so let's say the camera's 14 feet high. It's tilted approximately 20 degrees down, 22 degrees down. Now, it's hard to calculate the tilt, and I wouldn't let that one, I wouldn't sweat that one too much because you might be playing in a range of four or five degrees. And then vertical field of view. In order to find vertical, view, vertical field of view, I'll show you in a second, is you can go to our website and on the spec page of, of, on our website is the vertical field of view for each camera. Even if it's a verifocal, it'll show you the maximum vertical field of view and the minimum vertical field of view. So the information is available. But what we're gonna do look right now is just a quick video on configuring the calibration of the cameras. You know, jump in, we take a look, we go to the IVA menu and we go to calibration. Turn on calibration. You set your height as best you can. And again, sometimes we're guessing we didn't measure, but hopefully you measured. You set your tilt as best you can and then you can set your vertical field of view. But what you're doing is you're moving around these little guys, we call them mimics. And you're moving around those little guys and you're setting them so they'll be about the height of a person. They calibrate into about uh, a person that's 5'10". And so you actually drop them down. And by the way, you're doing this all on the Windows laptop. You're not doing this on the, on the NVR. That's why you need the Windows laptop. So you can see we're gonna get our guys lined up. I say, okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, we've got our tilt, our height, and our uh, setting, and you're just gonna apply and it applies the calibration. And what that does is it allows it to measure the speed of something because it knows it knows the approximate uh, measurements around it. And that green grid, okay, matter of fact, we'll go forward here. That green grid represents six, a six foot by six foot by six foot by six foot box. And so if you have that laid out, I've used um, two yardsticks together just to make sure it came out to about six foot by six foot. Then you got your calibration. Now, this grid here is a, a 2D representation of a 3D space. And so that's your ground plane. So you wanna get that as close to the ground plane so your mimics are look like they're touching the ground, okay? And then you wanna verify that they're the height of about 5'10". So you put them next to a car door, put them next to a person that they are moving around. They don't change the calibration. You've got to use those parameters to change the calibration, okay? But once you have that calibration in there, you'll see that they got the right height of a person approximately, and the vehicle will move through the scene. I'll say the vehicle's moving a couple miles per hour uh, and give you the output. So this is the hardest part. And then the first time you do it, it does take you a little while to, to get it done. I would say, uh, you know, 20 minutes or so for the first camera, but after that you can do them, uh, you know, in a couple minutes. It's just a matter of getting used to that first one and getting the, getting the calibration done. So the next thing though is classification. So 
built into here, and I'm going to actually have to pause this because I tend to go fast, is what's called classification. So pause it here. We put in sort of canned ones for person, or vehicle, clutter, group of people. And then I added one called truck because in our office in Tampa, we have trucks pull up in front of the building, block traffic, block people from getting in all the time. And I've got one of our cameras trained on the spot where they tend to do this. And I get an alert to my phone that says, there's a truck in front of the building and I can go out and look and go talk to the driver because my office, I try to keep it as quiet as possible, have no windows so I can't look outside, can't see what's going on. Other people are busy. I don't expect them to worry about it, but we can't have our deliveries and stuff like that block. So we, actually, this is something we use, but you can also tweak these calibrations on here. So let's say person, there's no person unless he's running is going 12 miles an hour. You might want to lower, lower that. The vehicle, you might want to lower you know, the speed in our street, even though some people go 60 and I put 60 at the max speed. Uh, you may also want to put a minimum speed. So on a person, if a person's walking around, you might want to put it at two miles an hour, a vehicle at 10. Clutter, I personally, I delete this one because all clutter is, is like, it'll also come up as unidentified object. Uh, and then group of people you can uh, toy around with. I have actually made the minimum area much smaller and then the maximum area is smaller. And so if people are too close together, you're worried about that six foot separation. Uh, you can then, uh, you know, say, hey, there's three or four people down there and it's a group of people. Maybe they shouldn't be groups together so much. So you can do that. So you can make other classifications. So you can make a person on a bicycle, a person on a skateboard. Skateboard moves differently than a person that's walking. Okay. And so you can make these classifications and add them to it. You just don't have to use the baked in ones. Uh, in, in the system. So you've got your calibration, you've got your classification. So let's go add some rules. And when you go in and add rules, now this is an IDA camera and it's got the six ones you have in there, which includes intrusion, line cross, enter, exit, loitering, and counting line. And then the seventh one is non-detect zone, okay? And I use non-detect zones to keep the camera from having too many false alarms and too much, shall we say, busy stuff going on in the camera because the camera is always thinking. So if you have the whole thing opened up to do detection, the camera's looking at the shadows, the leaves on the tree, these different objects, and you want to have the camera to concentrate on the area where the events are going to happen. And so in this case, we've got something in front of the door, okay, and we're doing uh, loitering. So if someone walks in the door here and they're hanging around more than I don't know, what is it, uh, 25 seconds or so, I think it is, and then create a uh, create an alert. So again, we go down here, yeah, and have people only filter on, so you have object filtering. And so I have this one set as loitering and line cross. So someone has to cross a line and then loiter in order to create the alert. So if a shadow comes in or if someone's standing outside, okay, they haven't crossed the line yet, it doesn't create an alert only when they become inside. But the reason why I have this yellow here, so I've got a yellow, an orange, and a green, is I'm creating these non-detect zones so the camera can focus on the area it needs to focus on. It's not having to do that uh, extra stuff. So the non-detect zones are as important as the detection zones. And you can do multiple events. So you could have intrusion and enter or loitering and line cross, or line cross, line cross, line cross, line cross. So you could have something where, you know, lines are crossed several different, you know, several different times on the system. So you don't have to just do just one. So let's talk about creating a line cross. So we've got our parking lot. This is at our California. And we're going to create a rule. And as you can see, they've already got a non-detect zone over here. That's this red. All right. And then we're going to go in and we're going to add your thing. And now this one, if you look, I'm going to click here, is an IVA plus. So it's got more stuff in it, including this one called logical rule. And so you're going to tell me what camera I would get. I would get an IVA plus camera only because of the logical rule. Because the logical rule allows you to take two, three, four, or five different events or multiple events. Let's say you got two line crosses and you can stack them so you can get less false alarms, less worried about weird shadows, stuff like that. 
and you can stack them. So you could have two line crosses and someone's got to cross those two lines in two seconds. So you don't have to worry about a shadow of someone, you know, walking outside, creating a problem for you. This way you can say, okay, someone's in this area. Uh, you can schedule all these. They're all scheduled, they're all customizable. So you can get very accurate notifications using an IDA plus camera and logical rules. Okay, so just keep that in mind if we we're gonna, you know, again, you're gonna ask me which one to get. I would only get an IVA plus because it also gives you appear, disappear, uh, tailgating, uh, and direction. And direction is a big one too because you could have a line or an area where if people are going one way, that's all right. If people are going another way, that's bad. You wanna get a notification on it. So again, uh, line cross. Then we can do intrusion. So again, I'll let this one go all the way through. So we're going to add a rule. We're going to add our intrusion rule. This video plays a little slow. And now we can go in and we can reshape this box to any way we want. We can add uh, other points if we want to, or just move around these. If we click on one of those gray ones, it'll actually create another point where we can go in and go in and make changes and move it around and just find our intrusion area, what we want to, what we want to look at. All right, we can give it a name. We don't have to call it IVA intrusion. We could call it parking lot intrusion. We could call it test, call it whatever. And then we can decide on an object filter. Do we want it on a car, vehicle, clutter group of people? And if you made your own classification, let's say skateboarding or bicycle or whatever, those can be on there too. No need to set event notifications because it's going to go in to the system. Or if you want to send them, you can send them to another uh, you know, a third party piece of uh, software in order to send it uh, to them. We don't need to adjust that for us. All right. And then our final one is an abandoned rule, which is, is object left would be a, another way of saying it. So something was abandoned in there. Same thing. You go to rules. You've got our non detect zone in the background. Go to add. We'll go abandon. And so something is left in a certain area. This may be behind a building. People are dumping garbage in your garbage bins. Kind of hard to stop them, but maybe stuff's being left on the ground. In that case, they're like, you know, littering or whatever. Uh, in this case, it might be, uh, you know, a vehicle, something like that. So you can see you're trying to create sort of this area around here. Maybe someone's parking in someone's parking space, you know? Go check it out. So there's all different kinds of rules. They all set up about the same way, pretty easily. Let's talk about camera placement a little bit. Camera placement. It is better to get the camera higher in the air looking down. Okay. The reason for that is as you get a little more separation between the objects, you'll get better accuracy. All right. Now this one is like 50, 60 feet high. So it's good for tracking some stuff, but other things it might not be as good for. Something a little lower to maybe have like a, uh, an intrusion area or something like that would be good. So it's better to be looking down than looking across. This one isn't bad, but some people have the cameras, you know, at eight feet or something like that. And it's, you know, you don't have that separation between objects. And so you might have two people walking across, across the road from each other, but they'll pick them up at one point as group of people because it looks like there's two people in it. Next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the NVR. So camera placement's important. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, frame rate. We're going to mention it a little longer. I would not have the cameras running less than 12 frames a second. Over here, actually, we're going to go to the next one. Next slide is you want to adjust the camera. And if you're going to adjust the camera, if your camera, let's say, is looking outside, so it's looking through a window, looking out a garage door, something like that. Uh, you wanna turn WDR on for uh, obvious reasons. Most of our cameras have WDR uh, and set the frame rate to 12 frames per second or higher. I've noticed that if you have the frame rate set to lower, 
there's more false alarms. You know, there's more, it's trying to detect more objects that, you know, might be a shadow on this camera. That's now a completely different shadow in, in this next view because there was not enough frames for it to try to figure out what was there. So 12 frames uh, a second or higher, you can still do motion detection record. So, cause remember the camera is creating alerts. So you can still set the recorder for motion detector detection and only record the motion. So you have that motion that happened, but you're getting specific things like a person walking behind the building where the garbage cans are and knocking over garbage cans or dumping their garbage in the garbage. And that's creating alert because there's a person back there that maybe shouldn't be back there or not back there in the wrong time of day. So make sure you set your, your cameras. And again, frame rate is uh, as important as every, everything else. And again, we can go in here and you set your brightness, your contrast. So we don't have to be in the camera to make these particular adjustments. We can do them right from here. We're gonna turn the WDR on. And as you can see, once we have that on, it begins to compensate a little bit and you can see objects better, people better, what's going on on the desk over here better. Can adjust the brightness a little more, contrast, and just get a good feel for what's going on in, uh, in this particular scene, okay? So once you have that set, picture looks good to you. You got your frame rate set. Can then go over here and you're gonna see a new menu appear, okay? And that's gonna be the IVA event menu. Okay, now I have noticed, okay, so this is from a, a technical side, that when you first plug in, let's say you've got four cameras that are IVA on it, when you first plug it in, you sometimes have to reboot, a little bit of, reboot the recorder to have it fully recognize them as IVA and then that button will appear, okay? So you're gonna click that button. It's gonna then say, what do you wanna use? So I'm gonna go to channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, whatever I have for IVA cameras and say, do I wanna show object area? Maybe. Show object trail? Maybe. Uh, object ID, I like showing rule area, event area, and maybe object trail, okay? But then you, you, what you wind up having is a lot of stuff moving around on the screen and it's distracting, okay? Now it's only recorded on the second stream, so it's not recorded on the first stream, uh, so you won't see it on playback at high resolution, but still I would keep that stuff, that clutter, shall we say, to a minimum. Then you're gonna set your rule type. So we've got number one, name, channel, what it's gonna do, is it gonna pop up on a screen? Okay, so that's local. Is it gonna buzzer? Is it gonna relay or is it gonna notify? Notify is by email or to the app, okay? And you can choose whether it's an intrusion, a line cross, enter, exit, stop, loitering. And if we scroll down, there is logical rule and all the other ones. That's why I say get an IVA plus camera. I'm not gonna figure out how to advance the slides. So here's just an example of the setup menu. So we're gonna go get stream. The reason why we wanna get stream is we wanna make sure we've got our frame rate. We can adjust that frame rate in setup. Okay, first stream, second stream. Then we can roll over to IVA event. There we go. IVA event, I'm gonna use whatever channel I'm gonna use. And then we go into alarm manager the settings and alarm manager. And then we, oh, sorry guys, I wanted to pause that for you guys. So we're gonna go in here and say, do we wanna trigger relay out? Do we wanna send an email mobile? If you're using the C3 software, you can actually force the event to go to the C3 software also but it needs to be on the local network. Now there is one trick, once you've made all your settings, so I'm gonna go into settings in here, okay? Now I've got the whole thing set up, I've given it a name, click edit, and then that saves it to the menu, then apply, and then apply, or you just could apply and it should save it up there, but I'm not a programmer. So you set all your parameters, and then if the camera is sending a loitering event in, and you want it to be notified, it will go in and, 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 and notify you, okay? Or you want an email, or you want a pop-up, or you want a buzzer, you want, you know, you want the, the local DVR to do something versus the 
uh, versus the you know versus something remotely. Most people have requested like an email or a remote or you know mobile one. Again, as I told you guys, we're on this industrial road and there are 25 mile an hour road. There's cars going 60 miles an hour and sometimes these trucks just park in the middle of the road, blocking traffic, and right in front of our building. So, so go over here and you do it now. You can get to this menu, and if it's play here, from a right mouse button click and camera setup. So you don't have to go to menu and then camera and then setup. You can go right from here. This is a right mouse button click, click camera setup, and then you'll see the IVA menu down there. Now you click get stream, all right? You go in, decide what you wanna do. I'm gonna sh you know, show everything, you know? How do you click that one? You unclick, show object ID, and then it'll allow you to do all of them. We're gonna create a name. And the on-screen keyboard goes up. So, you know, we type in test, line cross, you know, whatever we wanna call it. And again, this is me going, you know, real time, click line cross. You gotta click choose channel. So you choose the channel it's on. So you can have all your events on that one channel. See, I made a mistake. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put it on the, I didn't choose the channel. But you could have five different analytics on one camera and have the system reacting to it on just one channel. Okay, so you don't have to, you know, sweat a bunch of other stuff. And if you notice this camera says C plus M on it. So it's continuous plus motion. So it's recording a couple of frames, one frame a second all the time at low res, but then on events, it's recording at high res, uh, you know, whatever, the, you know, two, three, four, five, 4K camera, uh, megapixel camera. Oh, okay, one more, one more, sorry guys. So now this is the notification side. Again, I'm gonna stop this. So if you wanna get, notifications okay uh by email you do have to check metadata okay and this way then that metadata will go through and then you put in your email address and stuff like that but this also has another feature in it i wanted to show you above and beyond the metadata thing uh and that is come on there we go we'll just go for here is snapshot notify so what snapshot notify gives you is the ability to get uh, a snapshot from each camera or a camera, let's say once an hour, once every six hours, once every 24 hours, say, is the camera working? Uh, again, I use this feature. We have a little side gate we share with a, a neighbor who's a very good air conditioning company. I want to make sure the gate's closed. I mean, sometimes they leave it open. Now, if there's a couple cars there and I know they're working in their offices late, I'm not going to complain, but I have had to come back and close the gate because we don't want people wandering around, you know, outside of our in the back of our building. So we use that and I get it and I know that, you know, once every six hours or so, I get an email that says, oh, gate's, oh, yeah, gate's okay, yeah, it's fine. Gate's not closed. I can ride back over there before it gets too late. You can also get sensor inputs, which would be alarm inputs and you can get health checks. So if hard drive's overheating or something like that, you can get that information. So that's some of the other notifications you can get. How to play it back. So built into the search and playback, functionality is the ability to go search for uh, your events. And I have events, events all here, but I'll show you on here where we have smart search. I'll just click play here. We have smart search, IVA, and then just click search and it will search for all the IVA. So counting line or line, line cross, intrusion, whatever you have, it will then uh, allow you to go in and play those back. We go further. See, we got our object ID. See, we got our vehicle going through. Someone shaking the camera. Someone walking through, and so on. So we can go through all the events on there and get a good idea of what's going on. And here's another view of it. Also, go into IVA event. Search. This was a camera that's only set up for a few minutes, but I'm going to say only line cross I want to see. And it's going to show all the line cross events, which will 
eventually have me appear in there somewhere as I cross the line. <laughs> I'm crossing the line. So just to give you a summary. So uh, UI, uh, IP plus models, uh, upgrade support 4K cameras and displays, but they still can get the events, uh, the event configuration, same event configurations out of IVA cameras, even if you have uh, the earlier version of it. Uh, we have the IVA, IVA plus cameras, of course, with the analytics built into it, uh, able to search for event. You're able to alert by email notifications, get notifications that are useful. Okay. We still get requests. People still come in and go like, hey, by the way, um, I want to get notifications on motion. And they're like, no, no, you don't. You're going to get 800 emails an hour. You don't want motion. You can display alerts on screen. You can do pop-up noise. Uh, tell you to advise your techs on frame rate and camera height. Maybe uh, get a camera and you know, do a dry run at your office with one of these or talk to your rep and get it. There's no licensing fees on the NVR and we support on this. So if you're using a third-party camera, it shouldn't be a problem getting it to work. 